All right, everyone. I want to welcome you to the Blackboard Collaborate session for our K-12 BITS program. You hopefully have had an opportunity to, to uh, place your, your photo in my settings uh, and adjust your audio and whatnot. We're very happy to have you here. Um, today, we have a presentation on short, sweet, and successful maximizing Blackboard use for PD in K-12 districts. And I want to welcome you from Jenny Breister, and that's me, your representative from Blackboard, here uh, uh, coordinating the BITS program today. Um, first off, a few just kind of housekeeping announcements. We invite you to uh, take a look at our Blackboard Innovative Teaching Series playlist on YouTube, and that link is tinyurl.com slash Bits K12. Sudo, if you'd like to put that in the chat, that would be fantastic. Uh, on the playlist, what you'll find are an archive of all of our fantastic uh, uh, K12 Bits uh, webinars recorded, including the one for today. Today's will be on the playlist in about a week's time, uh, and you can come back and uh, share that with your colleagues as well. In addition, I wanted to mention that we have our Blackboard uh, professional learning community site on Learn. And I'm going to send a link to that uh, towards the end of our presentation today. We want to invite you to be a part of that professional learning community. Uh, and that's where we, again, will have the, um, uh, the link to the YouTube, as well as the actual deck from today, uh, and all kinds of information uh, for joining our professional learning community. So please accept that invitation. Upcoming, we still have two additional BIT sessions for spring 2017. Uh, and we're really excited about these two. On Monday, May 1st, we have Automate Your Classroom Communication with Personalized Learning Designer. That's with the guys uh, from Montana to Digital Academy, Mike Agostinelli and Jason Neffer. And then finally, to round out the season, on Monday, May 15th, we have Unexpected Ways to Use Blackboard to Help Your Classroom Run Smoother. Uh, and that's Kelly Hart and Carrie Locksman with Lawrence Public Schools. So please join us for those two sessions. Uh, and again, we'll have the information on how to re-register. Uh, for bits if you want to join additional sessions. Um, also a reminder that Blackboard World is coming to New Orleans uh, to NOLA uh, July 25th through 27th and there again is the uh, the link to sign up for BB World. If you haven't ever been to BB World um, it's a fantastic uh, several days of uh, infused with technology and learning and fantastic guest speakers. Uh, so we were just chatting about who was going to be <laughs> one of our guest speakers earlier um, and uh, it should be a really great, uh, great event. So if, you, if some of you can uh, join us for BB World, we'd certainly love to have you. And it's in New Orleans. And it's in New Orleans, exactly. So without further ado, we have Short Suite, that's your, in your neck of the woods, Short Suite and Successful, Maximizing Blackboard Use for PD and K-12 Districts. Um, today we have our friends from St. Mary Parish Schools, Amy Vaccarella, Teacher Facilitator of Technology, and Susan Dupree, District Technology Facilitator, are our two uh, acclaimed speakers today. And I want to welcome uh, you returning uh, as BITS presenters, and uh, we, we'll look forward to today. So take it away, ladies. Well, hi, guys. This is Sue, and I'm going to start off the presentation. By the end of this presentation, we really hope that you guys understand the approach that we use in St. Mary Parish to provide technology tools because Amy and I work specifically with technology that's supposed to support, that's intended to support curriculum. Um, this is how we provide technology tools to educators on a very, very limited budget and that's what this is all about. Now, despite our name, um, St. Mary Parish is, we are not a private or religious based district. Uh, we just love the saints in Louisiana. Um, and so we honor our French heritage with our place names. We're actually located in Louisiana, in south central Louisiana on the coast. And if you look at the circle drawing, you'll see all of the blue. That blue, yes, is water. So flooding and hurricanes, they're important concerns in our area. And if you've watched Swamp People on the History Channel, Mr. Troy Landry lives about 20 minutes from my home. And yes, we do teach students who will grow up to return to the swamp and they will make their living by hunting and fishing. And they do speak that way. So St. Mary Parish is a rural school district. Um, and and I, I say that 
to make sure that you understand that at rural, because it's rural, we also qualify for a 90% E-rate discount. And that's really important in the history of how we are Black, how we have Blackboard Learn. It's a long district. We have 22 educational sites. Um, the, the, I'm going to go back to the E-rate discount for a second because that's based on our free and reduced lunch population. Um, so we're definitely not an affluent district. Money is always tight in our district. And just to show you, this is what our technology department looks like. We have a chief financial officer who oversees the people listed here. Um, the two educational technology facilitators on that list, well, that's Amy and that's me. And um, so we are in charge. Of, we're the bridge between the actual technology people and the classroom teacher. Um, we speak both languages, so we are able to uh, negotiate things for both sides to make sure that um, the right settings happen. In addition, we have uh, we are fortunate to have technology lead teachers and school web administrators at each school um, that work on a contract basis. We can call on them for a little support when we need it. They're paid for two whole extra hours a month. The conscientious ones probably spend upwards of 10 hours a month assisting teachers at their sites, and we are very lucky to have them. It was a very uh, good thing that the school board did in providing those folks with a little stipend each month. Now, our issues, I would, since PD is only a small part of what Amy and I do, um, it, it's important that we identify the issues that we have in the district so that we could address them. I wish I could tell you that we actually sat down four years ago and outlined a formal plan, and that's the plan we're presenting to you today, but no, that's not how it happened. Um, most of what we learned, we gleaned from happenstance, trial and error, a lot of research. We're presenting it to you today as a backward glance. Understand, of course, that hindsight is always 2020. Our first challenge was that the district had too many communication platforms because five years ago, I will have to admit that Blackboard Learn was not reliable. At that point, we were self-hosted. Um, we have one network specialist, as you saw from the previous slide, and he couldn't give that server the attention that it needed. It was always out of date, not updated. You know. So our renaissance came when my superintendent asked me to start a virtual learning program. It was the perfect opportunity for me to say, you know, we should have Blackboard hosted to make sure that it's up and running all the time. And ironically, that was the last year that E-rate funds could be used to used for web hosting. So all the good things came together. And three years later, I can truthfully say that being getting our platform hosted was the best decision we ever made because it actually helped us to address the next four challenges. We are limited to two people on the Technology PD staff. It is difficult to find time for teachers, for teachers to find time for professional learning because they're overworked and underpaid in most cases. We did not have a cohesive space to provide that professional learning. And we really wanted to break that sit and get traditional PD model. So as we go through our presentation today, I think that you'll see that these are the issues that we've tried to address. The three topics that we're going to cover today are those three areas that we use Blackboard products for to meet our professional learning needs. We're going to talk about how we establish PLCs through Blackboard Learn and how we delivered both required and optional professional development to the educators in our district, again, relying on Blackboard products. So let's start with our school and district professional learning communities. This is where we started when we moved to our Blackboard hosted solution. Most of you are familiar with the work of Shirley Horde, or at least you've heard the word professional learning community in your past. Um, she was the one that, that formalized the idea that providing educators with an opportunity to learn about their teaching by working with peers in an environment that allows for reflection and social inter interaction, that that was important. Now, this integration was beginning to take place in our schools five years ago. Principals were beginning to be given the flexibility to allow time during the school day for content teachers to meet, but they needed a communication platform, and the answer was Blackboard Learn. The first thing that we did 
was to establish a space for at the district level for subject areas. Um, they were moderated by the curriculum specialists in the district. Um, these curriculum specialists were able to use the shelves to provide access to uh, resources. If you see the menu on the left-hand side, and an avenue gave them an avenue for discussions with teachers who never met in person. During the past year, three of the managers of these shelves participated in Collaborate Ultra training, and they anticipate hosting whole group meetings more frequently next year because teachers don't, won't have to leave their homes or their schools in order to participate. And these sites are now up 24-7. The pe people can access it at any time. And it provides the basics that Dr. Horde outlined for professional learning communities, community membership, time and space for learning, uh, data use support, and distributed leadership. So because these were working pretty well, we decided that we needed to create school-level professional learning communities. Now, I admit that we started very, very slowly. We created one for each of the schools, and the first thing that we used them for was for the posting of weekly lesson plans. But the teachers loved it because for the first time, they could see everyone else's plans. They could learn from those plans, and we saved a whole bunch of trees because nobody had to print them anymore. But pretty quickly, the sites began to be used for posting all the paperwork that's needed at a school for sharing student credentials, and for the more progressive principals, fostering whole school book studies and discussions. Now, this summer, I plan to work with school administrators using Collaborate Ultra for faculty meetings. <laughs> I really can't wait until they realize that they can record those faculty meetings for those who can't attend if they just turn on Collaborate while they're presenting the meeting. So what makes our professional development, our PLC courses short, sweet, and successful? Well, and this is for those of you who run your Blackboard environment. Once I've created them and they've gone through the first year, every summer I perform some basic maintenance. I copy the courses. I include enrollments and all the content. I update the managers and the term. And then I delete the whole group lesson plan and the whole group discussion boards from the copy before I copy them. Um, that way, I always leave the previous year's uh, PLC course available so that teachers can go back into it and grab a lesson plan that they might want to reuse. Um, but the new one is where the new lesson plans are going to be posted, where the new documents are going to be placed, where the new discussions are going to be held. And it's short for me because I have very little, very little to do. It's managed by someone else. And that's sweet because the schools are actually, or the, or the program managers are actually monitoring these boards. I don't have to do it. The, ac it. the access to resources is always there. You have an opportunity for targeted, thoughtful conversations. You can build community within a school or within a district by using these Blackboard Learn courses. And for me, I consider it su successful because. Blackboard Learn did not have a good name in our district because it was never it was never functioning properly. And suddenly all of the educators were exposed to Blackboard Learn in its new form where it works and it's always up and Collaborate Ultra is there. And I'm hoping, I was hoping that it would show them that Blackboard Learn could be used for their own classroom. You know, very subtly, just kind of a sneak and a little hint in there. Now, once the school-level PLC courses were in place, we realized that we could actually use them to do targeted PD trainings, those ones that are required by every school district. You know the ones that we have to do every year. Okay, bullying, suicide prevention, ethics training, bloodborne pathogens, technology updates, digital citizenship, anything that the district would require on a yearly basis that needed documentation or proof of participation was worth a consideration. And Yes, PD matters, and as facilitators, Amy and I are responsible for clearing the way for our PD and for the PD provided by moderators and, other, and facilitators in other departments. We, because we operate on a very limited budget, we need to make sure that we use the funds that are given to us effectively and efficiently. And we, got, we have to make sure that the school board 
understands that PD is important so that we continue to receive funds for those initiatives. So we looked at traditional professional development, you know, and of course that's the kind that the teachers really love where they're called to an after school meeting or they're called to a, to a block team meeting and they have to sit there and be talked at they have to be sit there and, and talked at for an hour and a half just so that we can check a box on a page. Um, the audience is captive, but really it's hard to arrange for makeups. You give out handouts, they, they get lost. I have to question the effectiveness of what we had been doing. So we decided to shake it up a little bit and revise our professional development for those required topics. And we decided to put those modules online embedded in Blackboard Learn. So we created them one time in a master class and then we copied them and you'll see them down here. We copied them into each school's shell. The facilitator of each one of these, because we don't, for example, I'm not in charge of bullying and suicide. We just help that facilitator create it and set it up and she becomes in charge of setting the window for completion. But all of the participants control the time and the place and the duration whenever they want to access that content. There's no need to arrange for makeups. Um, all the information is always there. It, they don't have a handout that might be lost. And you can actually have people do something like submit a reflective response or submit documentation through Blackboard. And it's better than just a sign-in sheet for evidence. So what makes it short, sweet, and successful? I don't have to control it. When I copy those things in, the participants are already enrolled in those school-level PLCs. If I use the content collection, changes made to the master documents are replicated across all of the copies. This is extremely valuable when you're dealing with 22 sites. Um, I can get my documentation through the Grade Center by setting up assignments or assessments for submission of documentation. And one problem that we had at first that I want to share with you is that when a principal, when a principal was the instructor or the moderator for one of these courses, he was not able to go through this professional development and actually submit documentation to get his, um, to, to get his check mark in the grade center be sorry guys, because he was um, an instructor. But we determined that if you turn on student preview mode, then the instructor can go into Blackboard, take all the quizzes, look at all the things, and submit documentation just like a student does, because the student preview mode is going to create an account in the Grade Center that says principal's name, preview mode so that he too can get his credit for having completed the courses. And again, I don't have to control it. The school level instructors, the grade level facilitators, they maintain control of the courses. Uh, once again, you get the long-term access to instructional materials and you can have conversations where all the voices can be heard. And I don't know about you guys, but I was always the person in the back of the faculty meeting that when they would ask, do you have any questions? I might have questions, but I didn't want to slow everybody down by asking them. Or it took me a little longer to formulate my answer. When I'm in a conversation in a discussion board, I can take my time and I can formulate my words and I can put it down and then my voice can be heard too. And I love it because it's successful. Not only does it break the sit and get model, but my participants are exposed to assignments and assessments, which they weren't exposed to before these modules were released. And so now Amy's going to take over and talk about district supported optional professional development. But first, I'm going to show you one slide. We're going to move on to that optional stuff. These things are not required by the district. And we really stand on the shoulders of giants and we need to review some of the research that helps us make good decisions about PD in our district. And one of them is the technology adoption life cycle model. It's based on the work of Rogers. But I like this particular interpretation of his work because it reminds us, although Amy and I think our work is important, there are those out in the field who will come unwillingly or not at all to our sessions. 
And we're okay with that. We have to be okay with that because research indicates that's to be expected. We know we will always attract those early adopters as long as our offerings are viewed, viewed as valuable. Um, we also know that those educators at the top of this curve, they can be enticed to come to our classes by the success of the people who sign up first. And Amy and I are always willing to sit with those skeptics or those that haven't developed their technology skills along the way and work with them individually. But we realize that sometimes we won't be successful with those individuals. And I'm sad to say, it breaks my heart to say this, but in our experience, we've seen that those in the laggard category either retire soon or don't stay in education very long. We don't want to ignore these people, but we do try to allow them to make choices about their participation in these types of courses, even though we know that they could benefit everyone in every course. Okay. Welcome, everyone. I'm Amy Vaccarella, and I'm going to go ahead and start talking to you guys about the optional professional development opportuni opportunities in our district. I'm so excited to be here with you guys and to share with you um, what we're doing here in St. Mary Parish. The first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is the short and sweet online professional development courses that we created. When I initially got hired on for this position, I was spending my time driving from school to school to school, providing face-to-face, -face, um, sit-down professional, professional development with the teachers. Half the time when I walk in, you know, I got these expressions of exhaustion on their faces. They really didn't want to hear what I have to say. It was really this, just the sit and get model. I would go in there, talk to them about certain technology issues that were going on in the parish or different tools that were needing to be implemented. And that was it. And then I would leave and then I would drive to another school. So with all that being done, I said there has to be another way. So I came back and um, we developed this short and sweet online professional development. Why did I call it short and sweet? I'll get to that in just a moment. But what is it? What this is, is it's a monthly online course that we create um, via Blackboard Learn. I develop each online course based on skills that the teacher should learn. For example, we have Office, Microsoft Office 365 in our district. So some of my courses um, are on like Microsoft OneNote, Microsoft Class Notebook, Microsoft OneDrive. But I also like to spice it up and provide tools that would enhance student engagement in the classroom. Like for example, like Clickers, Remind, um, little Web 2.0 tools like that. I wanted to make sure that the teachers practice the skills obtained in the short and sweet courses by implementing the, those skills into their classrooms. Therefore, when I create these courses for their assignment, I'll, they always have to provide evidence to me that this has been done, okay? So what I do, so I create the course and I open it up on the first of the month and then it ends on the last day of the month at midnight. I usually offer about two courses a month because based on my budget, I can only offer two courses a month because so my funding, I have a limited amount of funding. Um, as a result of my funding, my limitations on funding, I have to put a limit on my enrollment. And therefore, there's a lot of teachers who end up on the waiting list, unfortunately, but it's a good thing because I know there's always a need for the course and they'll retake it whenever I offer it again. These courses are self-paced. The teachers can, or administrators can do it at their own time. At night, I know a lot of um, teachers have children, and they don't have time to do PD, you know, right when they get home from school. So they can work on it at night if they want to, or on the weekend, whatever is most convenient to them. And that's a big plus in this. Um, they do earn CLU hours, continuing learning, you know, units. They also, also do provide them with a stipend which is very small, it's $12.50 an hour, and always, um, it's always a two-hour course, so total of $25. And I also award them with a badge, which I will speak to you about in just a moment. I do grade the assignment, like I mentioned earlier, they do have to go and implement the skill in their classroom. Because I don't know how many trainings I personally been to, I just sit there 
and listen to them. And then I go back to my classroom and I forget everything that I've learned. And I have to go and try and look in my notes and try and find how to do it again. With these courses, they're designed to implement those skills, you know, within that session, within that course. Um, it also promotes teacher collaboration across the district, as you'll see in just a moment. And I also provide them the sweet treat with a positive message, which you'll see in just a moment as well. So here's a typical class uh, layout for me. I keep it the same for all courses, and I keep it very simple. Because some of these teachers who are uh, partaking in these classes, these courses, are new with technology or they're new with Blackboard Learn, and I don't want to overwhelm them. And I want to keep the same layout for every course so that way they know what to expect. As you can see right here, um, I always start with announcements at the top, my instructor, so they can always press here and they can get my information to contact me if they ever have an issue or a problem with an assignment. They can always locate their grades. Right here is lesson content and assignments, discussions and help. This is how I lay it out for every course. So let's pretend we click on lesson content and assignments. When I click on, when a teacher clicks on that, the first thing that he or she will see is an introduction to the course. It tells them what they will learn, what to expect. Then they go down the, the um, course shell, the page, and I just do simple folders. I know there's learning modules and things like that, but again, I keep it very simple because this is kind of like an introduction for some of those teachers into Blackboard Learn. It gives them ideas of how to set up their classrooms that may not be so overwhelming. So again, I just use folders and I put each a little video tutorial of each skill within these folders. And then I end it with an assignment. Now, the whole total length of the class should not take the teacher more than 25 minutes to an hour to complete. I do, that's why I call it short. I don't want to overwhelm them with hours and hours of PD because they won't want to take another class with me. So, and a lot of the feedback that I get is they all, the teachers always comment is like, thanks for not overwhelming us with too much. It's just perfect. So in this particular course, this is a Promethean course, um, they do have three skills that they're learning, but it's very easy skills. And again, it won't take them very long to complete it. And, oh, sorry, excuse me, guys. In this particular lesson, they have to actually create a flip chart using those skills in their curriculum. Um, so therefore, again, they're using the skills that they learn. For the assignment, they do that, and then they post their assignment to a discussion board. So therefore, all the teachers across the district can see their flip chart. They can borrow ideas. They can um, use the, their flip charts in their own classes. So it's a great collaboration platform. For example, this is the same class. I had a total of 27 participants. I actually bumped to, I usually only allow 25, 20 to 25 uh, participants in a class because of my funding issues. So I did put 27 in at this point. And look at the total posts. I have a total of 99 posts. Wow, that's powerful. That's very good district-wide collaboration going on here. Um, and it, it includes elementary, middle school, high school teachers, and administrators take part in these courses as well. So for example, these are some of the comments that the teachers make. Um, great ideas, I plan to use your ideas with my next novel, A Mockingbird. I find even at the high school level, students enjoy these fun tools. So all of these, these are just different responses from that discussion board that the teachers are writing to each other. You know, thank you, I saw it, thank you for the idea, I'm gonna use this, can I use your flip chart in my class? So they are gaining so many ideas um, across from across the district. I don't know if you were like me, but when I was in the classroom, I always wanted to know what other teachers in the district was doing, because I know that there was always somebody out there doing a better job than me. Um, so this opens up that uh, border, the parameters across the district, you're learning from each other. As mentioned earlier, I do provide the stipend, I do CLUs, and I award badges. I had to find a way to acknowledge the accomplishments of the teachers participating in the professional development. I had all these teachers putting in these hours for their classrooms, 
to better themselves, their students, their schools. So I wanted to acknowledge them. I wanted the, their administrators and I also wanted the district personnel um, to see what their teachers were doing within their schools. Um, so therefore, I introduced the badge system. This allowed the, the administrators and the district personnel to see what was going on. I told the teachers, I said, post your badges. You can post it on the teacher, your teacher web pages for parents to see. You can put it in Blackboard. You can also post it on a classroom wall. And now as I walk through schools, I see so many teachers posting their badges on the outside of their doors. So therefore, when people are walking through their hallways, they can now see what teachers are um, accomplishing what badges. And they're growing as an educator and as a learner, they're continuing to learn. They can visually see their progress. Um, it also allows their students to see that their teacher is also continuing to learn. And as you can see right here, these are some of the badges that I do offer, and these are some of the courses that I have created for our teachers within our district. Promethean, we have a lot of uh, Promethean boards. Most, the majority of our teachers have Promethean. Um, however, a lot of them still use it as an overhead projector. So I thought it was a great need to be able to do some Promethean online courses for our teachers, and these are big hits. They really love the Promethean. Um, but these are the badges that they can post on their web pages on the outside of their doors or whatnot. Okay, and these are some of the sweet treats. You know my short because the classes are very short and sweet. This is where I get my sweet from. I always end my class with a sweet treat to those who successfully complete the course. You think I'm crazy, but they love this. Like for example, I'll buy M&Ms and I'll post this on there. Many and many thanks for all that you do. I've sent York peppermint patties, and I meant to tell you how much you are appreciated and keep up the good work. These are all, this is, the cost of this is minimal, and it goes a long way towards making them happy. It also encourages them to participate again. You'll never realize how, um, I don't know if, if you were like me, but in, in, when I was in the classroom, I always gave candy out a whole lot. Well, now I'm doing it for the PD, and I get so much feedback just from giving out candy. It's crazy. But anyway, this is some of the teacher feedback. I know as an educator, I always self-evaluate myself. always want to know um, things that I can change or things that are um, going great. And these are some of the comments of the teacher feedback that I have received since doing these online courses. And the first one says, I wanted to let you know that I'm enjoying the short and sweet online PD that you're facilitating. Thank you for being so patient and relentless in your efforts to grow your students. This is meaning because if they ever have a problem with these online courses, they contact me. I walk them through it. If I have to go meet with them face to face, I will. But um, I am there for them and the feedback has been great. Um, another thing that I've decided to do, that we've decided to do is with all these courses that we're creating, we have to make it available to, in other aspects. For example, the common complaint of administrators um, is that on in-service days, they, don't, they run out of ideas of what to present, especially in technology. So what we'll do is we'll let them pick one of these online courses, and they can embed it. We'll embed it into their PLC course, and they, they can log on at an in-service or a faculty meeting and complete the course, and we will issue them CLU hours and or a badge. And they can also perform, they can also do the uh, course in grade level or block level meetings. And also the technology lead teachers in the school, um, they can also select one of these courses for their faculty to do, and that will count as one of their PDs because the technology lead teachers in our schools or regular school teachers, that this is not a separate job for them. This is just an added job, um, an additional job to their already teaching position. So they they run short on ideas of what to present, or they're limited on their time that they can fulfill their requirement of presenting a PD. So they will also select one of these online courses, and they, they will get their um, faculty to complete it. Now, one of the pain points with that is that our technology lead teachers have trouble sometimes getting the teachers to complete the course online. So then we have to resort to the administrator of the school 
to make sure the administrator requires the teachers to complete it. Another idea that we started was the coffee talk. I know it sounds crazy, but I had an idea to start a coffee talk on Saturday mornings. I said, let's see who's going to show up on a Saturday morning to do PD with me. And you will be surprised, but I had a full house one Saturday morning. And I had a coffee bar set up with treats and donuts and all that. And they were just thrilled. And they said, we want more. And I said, you know what's even a better idea? Instead of you guys coming to me face to face, I will also provide you the opportunity to sit at your house in your pajamas with a cup of coffee. And we can, we can use Blackboard Collaborate. And we are just having a webinar on Saturday mornings. And that has been a great success as well because they don't even have to leave their house and they're still learning um, skills that they can implement in their classroom. Okay, so why is this short, sweet, and successful? It's short because the course contains very short videos explaining the skills being taught. Sometimes one course will only contain one video of a skill. Um, it's, I don't want to overwhelm them. If I have, if I have an hour or two hours worth of PD in there, I would never get, um, participants back. So I keep it very short. Um, the course duration is two weeks to one month. When I first began this, I would run a one course every two weeks, um, offer, you know, every two weeks. But then I started getting feedback from teachers saying, well, I really wanted to take that course, but I had homecoming to do that week, or I had prom that week. So what I've started to do this year is on the first of the month, I have two courses being offered, and then it ends on the last day of each month. So they have a full month to complete it. The only downfall that I had with this so far is that they'll sign up for it, and they have this whole month to complete it, but they don't complete it. So that's my only pain point. I don't know what to do about that. If any of you have any suggestions on that, that would be so wonderful. Because granted, as, you, um, as I said earlier, I have a waiting list on every class. So therefore, if I'm only accepting 20 people and five of them don't complete the course, well, those five teachers on the waiting list missed out on the course. So I have to figure out what I'm going to do about that next year. If you have any ideas, please let me know. Um, it's also sweet because it encourages district-wide collaboration amongst teachers and administrators. As you saw in my example, they beg, borrow, steal from the discussion board. Um, the course includes hands-on strategies that can be applied immediately in a teacher's classroom. It's not just sit and get PD. The teachers love this because they have to do it. And once they do it, well, it's already ready to go for their class. So they, they use it immediately. And the courses can be completed at a time most convenient to the participant. And that's so important, especially with busy working mothers and teachers. We want to be um, what's most convenient for them. We want to provide a good, great time for them. And ex in this short suite, um, my short and sweet online PD is successful because the courses are always full. I always have a waiting list of teachers that want to get in. and um, so anyway, so those are some of the short and sweet and successful um, courses. So what? So what does all this matter? This is Sue again. So here were our challenges from the, from the, the slide earlier in the presentation. With too many platforms, what we did was reintroduce Blackboard Learn and Collaborate as reliable platforms. They always work now that we're hosted. They're always up and they're available inside the district and from home. Limited PD staff, we needed to make sure we created activities that were targeted, reproducible, easily monitored, perhaps by someone else, which is always nice from our point of view. We allow learners to control the time and the place and the duration for their PD as much as possible. We use Blackboard Learn products to provide support for the PD and the PLCs, and we're offering them a variety of opportunities that are intended to meet the, the educators' needs. Okay, so we are teachers leading teachers. Our technology lead teachers are teachers leading teachers, and we have to be particularly aware of how we present ourselves to other educators. Amy and I have learned that teachers learn best when their emotional needs 
including things like being overworked, overwhelmed, underappreciated, or recognized. But like students, educators learn best when they are actively involved. So we make sure that we put that in our courses. When they connect what we're doing to their prior knowledge. And just like students, when they're comfortable and supportive in the environment. And so that's what we try to provide. We also know, a couple of years ago, I found an article by Jason Morgales in his early research. And he said, this is what has worked. And we've seen that this works for us. Using humor, including all teachers, explaining the strategies quickly, and then moving on to letting them do some, pr some practice making every new thing that we're presenting sound easy. Oh, no, look, this part is so easy. It works. They believe us. Um, building on what the teachers already do, and we need to make sure that we always present ourselves as continual learners. We are learning every day. We learn from people in the field. They teach us constantly, and we need to recognize that, and Amy and I do that. What Morgales discovered also that doesn't work, talking or requiring too much reading, that doesn't work. Asking, are there any questions? You don't get any. Presenting too many ideas in one session, focusing on our experiences. Our experiences are limited. We need to focus on their experiences. That's what they pay attention to. And then finally, from our good old friend, Dr. Gusky, expecting change or implementation to happen without support or follow-up. We can't always support or follow up, but we try. We know how important it is, and we recognize that. Our contact information is here if you ever need it. I'm just going to conclude with the fact that some – don't, please don't think that we do all of our sessions in, in – through uh, online means. We've discovered, for example, that teaching about Blackboard Learn, that actually works better in a traditional environment. <laughs> and that's pretty ironic. But we need to be the bridge. We need to take these our, our people from where they are to where we want them to be and talking with them as colleagues. And we will go into a school and talk to just two or three individuals that have the potential of being our innovation leaders. And, and that's important for us. But now that we have all of this online, we have the ability and the time to go into those schools and work with those individuals on a one-to-one -one basis. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supporting student learning by providing professional development to teachers. That's what professional development was intended to do. And in our district, we usually return to Blackboard Learn and Blackboard Collaborate to make PD happen. If you need to find us, there we are. We welcome your questions. Um, we'd be happy to talk with you on an individual basis. Please don't hesitate to contact us. And if you can't remember where you saw our names, just go to the St. Mary Parish homepage and click Technology, and you'll find us there. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Yes, thank you so very much. It was a joy to be a part of this. And again, if you have any ideas for us, or um, one of my main questions is, is if you are providing PD to others, um, what incentives are you using in your district to um, get participation from your teachers? I'm providing a stipend, but what if, we, if I don't have the funding for that? Are there any other incentives that you use in your district that promote the learning process and, you know, get them to come and partake in your session? I would love to know that. Any ideas? Because we are always learning, too. Yes. That's great. And you know what we'll do as well, uh, Amy um, and Sudu, we'll, on the community site, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it an open-ended kind of discussion item. This is really good stuff. Um, looks like you're just getting accolades for the information you've shared today so far, <laughs> as opposed to additional uh, Thank questions. you, guys. Thank, Thank you all. You. It's been fun. Great, great, great. Thank you. All right. Well, maybe we'll, we'll save some of the questions for more of the uh, uh, well, you know, actually, there, you know, there are a couple things that we were talking about offline that would be kind of good. Now, when we talk about, you know, the question about are all schools, um, how are other people's schools, you know, PLC courses being used? Are they all being used for high quality professional learning? Are we thinking as an open-ended question, gals, for for those in the in our audience, or is that something that you can elaborate on even within you know St. Mary? 
Well, I can I can tell you that um, I've read a lot about TLCs in my in my research, and I know that it's not something that happens overnight. It takes a lot of support, and I would love to be able to say that all our school PLCs were being used uh, to their maximum benefit, but you know that's not the case. A lot of times it rely it, the, the the success of a school PLC will rely on the people who are designated as the instructors in the course and if they're not very technology savvy or if they don't see the benefits to using Blackboard Learn as a collaborative communication tool it's not going to happen as much as it could um, so that means, and that to me, that that's a check mark saying, okay, Duper, you need to go into the field and you need to do more work with the administrators. So that's on my list of things to do next year. I want to make sure that I show them all of the things that they could be doing with Blackboard Learn that would encourage growth in their professional learning communities at the school. And thank yeah. you, Kate, for the question about the numbers. Yes, we are operating on a on a really, really, really tight budget. In fact, that the only thing we're paying stipends for are that is that optional PD. The rest of it, we don't even have. To, we've one of the reasons that we turn to online is because now we don't even have to pay for their travel. <laughs> Can I comment on this too as well? Um, I forgot course. to mention this. I forgot to mention this about the stipends and the funds. Oddly enough. Um, when I knew it was a great success is when my one of my courses were filled up and I had a teacher call me and say, can I please get in the course? And I'm like, well, I'm so sorry. I said, I can't pay you. I don't have funds available. I'm limited. And the teacher said, it doesn't matter. I just want to get in the course to learn the skill. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, yes, most definitely I will put you in the course. And that's happened to me a few times. So some teachers are not even worried about the stipend. They just want to learn the skill because it's convenient to them. They can do it at their own time. They earn a badge and a CLU hour. And that's a wow factor for me. And that we've gotten some really positive we've gotten some really positive comments from people um who that required professional development who said thank you so much for not making us stay after school for an hour when we're worried about our children and we're worried about taking them here and there I can do this in my own time and I don't have to listen to everybody else I can do it on my own thank you so much so there are some benefits to doing it this way yeah. yes now gals we all I also wonder about you know when you think about the school light uh, the school site level facilitators are there are there particular things you need to do to train that group of folks um, you know it could be different from the district site level the district users that you're that you're training Miss Sue was that a question I, it was kind of blurry to me was it a question oh, about the technology how, lead teachers right how do you train your technology lead teachers Amy Okay, um, the technology lead teachers, like I uh, stated before, are these are t uh, teachers that um, the principals ask for them to be the TLTs at the schools, and they're already like a teacher, a fifth grade teacher, sixth grade, whatever. But what I do is I call them in once or twice a year, and I provide them a training of something that I want them to go back to their schools to present. So, um, like, for example, I allowed them this year to select one of the online PD courses that we created. And once we selected that course, we then went through the course, they went to the training first, and then they went back to their school, and they facilitated that training through Blackboard at their school. Um, so I do call them in once or twice a year for a training, and that's usually how we train our technology lead teachers in each school. And Randall is posting some things about suggesting that perhaps you could have an online PD day in lieu of having to go to school to campus on a PD day. Oh man, I love that idea. That would be awesome. Yes. Thank you, Randall, for sharing that. Yeah, that's that old adage that you know time being more important than money sometimes. So I <laughs> think he's right on there. All right, folks. Well, you've, everyone, thank you so much. This has been such an excellent uh, session. Um, you know, lively, and uh, that all starts. That all stems from our two fantastic presenters, uh, Amy and Sue. Uh, you've got all their information here, and again, you'll all have the the deck uh, um, to, uh, to share with other colleagues. So for now, just a couple of additional housekeeping announcements. Again, we know that uh, BB World's coming in New Orleans uh, this year, so please consider coming to BB World. Also, we're nearing the end of our spring uh, bit series. We've got a couple more coming up, as we talked about. Um, but we are always looking for great presentations uh, for the fall. Uh, so 
if you've got ideas, please don't hesitate to email me, uh, and uh, uh, we'll we'll look at getting uh, your potentially your presentation uh, on the fall calendar. And uh, finally, uh, we just wanted to thank everyone for being here, uh, Sue and Amy. It's been, been a fantastic session, and we'll look forward to posting all of this great information on the Blackboard uh, K-12 Bits community site as well as on the playlist. So everyone have a fantastic afternoon. And we'll catch you at our next bit season uh, session. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Bye bye.